In this video, I will try to explain how a load sense control adjusts the swash plate angle and the pump's output flow according to the system's needs. In my previous video, I explained how the A10 VSO pump works with LS control in two positions. When the flow control valve at the pump output is fully open and when it is fully closed. For better understanding, please watch that video first. Let's assume we have a fixed oil flow passing through a flow control valve and draining into the tank. When the valve is fully open, the pressure difference between the upstream and downstream is zero. As we start closing the valve, the pressure difference starts to increase with the rise in upstream pressure. So by closing the valve, the pressure differential increases, and by opening the valve, it decreases. In a fixed flow control valve position, changes in downstream pressure cause a change in upstream pressure, but the pressure differential remains constant. Now, let's look at how changes in the flow rate through the valve affect the pressure difference. In a fixed flow control valve position, an increase in flow causes an increase in inlet pressure, which in turn increases the pressure differential. So when the oil flow rate increases, the pressure difference also increases. Conversely, when the oil flow rate decreases, the pressure difference decreases as well. As I mentioned earlier, increasing the downstream pressure increases the upstream pressure at the valve, but the pressure difference stays the same. Now let's connect the upstream and downstream flow to an LS valve. As we have observed, by closing the flow control valve or increasing the flow rate, the pressure differential increases. This pressure differential makes the LS spool move and pushes it against the spring, which connects the upstream flow to the control piston. Typically, the standby pressure in the LS system is set between 14 bar and 30 bar. Thus, the pressure difference required to move the spool is within this range. These conditions remain unchanged even with fluctuations in downstream pressure, as the pressure difference stays constant. Since the pressure difference remains constant, the flow rate through the valve does not change and therefore the speed of the actuator also remains constant. As the flow rate decreases or the flow control valve opens, the pressure differential reduces. The spring pushes the LS spool, causing the servo piston to connect to the tank. Now let's examine how the LS control regulates the pump flow rate proportion to the opening of the flow control valve. Here we have A10 VSO DFR, which has LS control. The flow control valve is fully open, so the pressure differential across it is zero. I've already covered this operating condition in my previous video. The swash plate is at its maximum angle and the pump is operating at maximum displacement. Now let's begin closing the flow control valve and monitor the pump's operation process step by step. As the flow control valve is closed, the pressure differential increases. This pressure differential causes the LS spool to move, thereby connecting the control piston to the pressure line. Since the cross-sectional area of the control piston is larger than that of the bias piston, the force it exerts on the swash plate is greater. Therefore, it pushes the swash plate toward a smaller angle. By reducing the swash plate angle, the pump's output flow rate decreases, 
which leads to a reduction in the pressure difference across the flow control valve. With the reduction in pressure difference, the LS spring pushes the LS spool. The LS spool positions itself such that the control piston pressure is at a level where the swash plate angle remains constant. Let's close the flow control valve further. With the closure of the valve, the delta P increases. The LS spool moves, resulting in a rise in control piston pressure. The control piston pushes the swash plate and reduces its angle. By reducing the swash plate angle, the output flow rate and consequently the pressure difference across the flow control valve decrease. The LS spool shifts into a position that regulates the control piston pressure to stabilize the swash plate angle. All these steps occur within a fraction of a second. As we observed earlier, changes in system pressure due to the presence of the LS signal line do not affect the pressure difference across the flow control valve and the pump's output flow rate. Now let's open the flow control valve and track the system's response step by step. With the opening of the flow control valve, the pressure difference across it decreases. Now the LS spring can push the LS spool and connect the control piston to the tank. The bias piston pushes the swash plate toward a larger angle. As the angle and pump flow rate increase, the pressure difference across the flow control valve rises again. The pressure difference increases until the LS spool is positioned so that the control piston pressure keeps the swash plate angle constant. Let's fully open the flow control valve and go through the steps again. By opening the valve, the pressure difference decreases. The LS spring pushes the LS spool and connects the control piston to the tank. The bias piston pushes the swash plate toward maximum displacement. Since the flow control valve is fully open, the pressure difference across it remains zero. This is how the LS control in the A10 VSO pump operates, and nearly all other pumps with LS control function similarly. I hope I have managed to explain its working principle thoroughly, clearly, and accurately.